Miami's freshman class is certainly exciting, a talented group, a top 10 recruiting class. There's five guys in, in my mind that I think are really could be impact players this year. David, I'm going to let you lead it off with, with who you think is, is essentially the, the freshman to watch for for the season. We'll get into some other guys that maybe not as heralded of these five because I think these five are pretty consensus, five guys to watch for. But name one, uh, Do, you, do you, what do you think of the, of the freshman class in particular? Is there a guy that you're looking forward to having a big, big impact this season or even maybe in fall camp, maybe has a chance? Either way, you want to put this one. Yeah, I mean, I'll take the uh, low-hanging fruit. And I'll go with Francis Maui Noah. I think he's going to be your starting offensive tackle. I would assume after the spring, it'll be right tackle. Um, I think he's talented enough where if they have to kick him inside due to maybe some sort of injuries that might pop up during the year, he's strong enough uh, as a true freshman to handle inside inside duties as well. So there's versatility there. Uh, I think he's ultra athletic. I think he's extremely physical and highly competitive. Uh, he was a top 10 recruit in the country in the 2023 class, and he is definitely uh, validating that ranking after a strong spring. So I would be surprised if he is not a freshman All-American. Quite frankly, this might be a little hot takey. I wouldn't be surprised if he ends up on like a second or third team All-ACC team at the end of the year. I think he's that talented and that much of a difference maker and that much of a weapon on the offensive line. The player I'm going to say has nothing to do with Francis because I think Francis is going to be an impact player. There's just another guy that has really intrigued me, and I think his impact is going to be great on this team for this season and for the future. But I'm going to talk about these other guys real quick. Uh, with Samson, I think Samson has a bright future. I think he's going to have a good season this year as well. Ruben Bain, I know many people are excited about him, and Mark Fletcher at running back. But the guy that I'm most excited about, and I think it can have a big impact with this team, and I think it might surprise some people based on the depth chart, and that's Nathaniel Joseph, a wide receiver. Look, he's a guy that I think is going to be one of these guys that maybe he's not going to get opportunities early, but I think when his opportunities do, do come, I think he's going to take full advantage of it, and I think he's going to be a playmaker for the offense. Now, he might not have one of these seasons where he has 50 catches this year or anything like that, but I think his impact is going to be great. When he gets on the field, I think he's going to maybe have chances to crack that top six, be in there, and really have a chance to really move forward. And I think that's what's going to happen when he does get on the field, whenever that might happen. I think he's a guy that, that has shown tremendous work ethic, and that's what I want to touch on because I think his impact for this freshman class, for this program moving forward, can be great. He's a guy, just for example, over the summer, he's a guy that came into the, the practice facility, caught jugs. Um, he was doing, you know, 15, 1600 a week, and they do have a competition with the other wide receivers. And, and he was essentially topping that list each and every week. Other wide receivers were going in and doing it as well. He was essentially leading the charge with the upperclassmen that they were doing it too. He would go in by himself. He'd work with the student manager and he would get those high marks, you know, essentially have the most for the week. However, he also decided to do even better than that. He had weeks where he had over 2,000 catches on the jugs machine. I think that kind of work ethic mixed in with his talent. I think he's going to have a chance to have a real impact on this team. I like freshman playmakers. I like playmakers whether at the skill positions, wide receiver, running back. And I think what Joseph has a chance to really make one of those big impacts. Also pay attention to him on the special teams. But I think he's just going to be one of those guys. It could take him a little bit to get on the field because they have upperclassmen. But I think once he gets on there, I think he's going to have a really good freshman season and a really good season moving forward in his career. Yeah, the things you're alluding to with with Nathaniel Ray Ray Joseph, uh, you know, from a culture standpoint, is what excites me about this class in general. It just seems like it's a lot of alpha personalities. It's a lot of people. It's a lot of guys that care about the work. It's a lot of guys that care about football and and putting in w the necessary work to be great. Uh, you you can't just show up on Saturdays and be great. You got to put in the work all the other days. And, and Ray Ray Joseph does that. Francis Maui Noah does that. Mark Fletcher, Ruben Bain, all these guys we're talking about in this segment here um, fit that billing. I, I want to talk about Ruben Bain too. I think he's a guy that you look at him right, and you're kind of like, really, this guy, this guy is a top 100 recruit. This guy is going to be a, a great college football player because he doesn't look the part physically in terms of uh, being a 6'2", 270-pound defensive end, right? Like he's a little sawed off, um, but he gets it done 
uh, when it when the whistle blows. And and I know after the spring, everyone inside the program is like, man, this guy is a complete stud. He is he's going to be great. And I think uh, he's only going to improve when his athleticism improves after being in a college level strength and conditioning program. So uh, I think it's rare. Both these guys I'm talking about are line of scrimmage guys, and it's very hard for true freshmen to make an impact uh, at those positions, particularly in Ruben's case, because Miami has pretty good depth at defensive end. Uh, but I think Ruben's just so good that they're not going to be able to keep him off the field. I don't think they, they want to keep him off the field. I think they feel like he can be an impact player right away this year. You know, and I, and with Ruben, you know, the production is, was there in high school. And I think just, you never, you never know until it actually happens, but it did happen in spring football. You know, as soon as he arrived, he was producing, he produced in the spring game. He produced uh, against other offensive linemen, regardless of what unit he was going against. He's a guy that gets to the quarterback. He makes plays. He's going to make plays this year when he's on the field. I know one thing that the Miami coaching staff really likes about him is his position versatility. He, they feel like he can play inside on certain packages, and I think that's going to be good for him this season and his future. I think he's a guy that can play outside, but I think they're, they're, they want to move him around, and he certainly did that in high school, and I think he's going to be productive where, wherever he's at on the spots. And I think that gives the defensive line, it gives the defense a, a great look, a, something different for a playmaker that you can move around. And you touched on his, essentially what he looks like. That's going to improve as all freshmen typically do. But yeah, he didn't come in. You know, I know Jalen Phillips was a transfer, but Jalen Phillips was one of the most impressive physical defensive ends we've seen. You know, another freshman that came in that was certainly impressive physically, you know, an Alquadine Muhammad. You know, Ruben Baines just different, but he's certainly a guy that's productive and the Miami coaching staff wants to get him on the field. I think he's going to get on the field. I don't think it's going to be one of these situations where, oh, it's a talented guy. Oh, you know, is he not going to get on the field? We've seen that over the years with different coaching staffs. So I think they're going to get Ruben on the field. I, I don't think he's going to be a guy that they're going to be hiding or anything like that. And I think Ruben's so productive that he's going to essentially demand the coaches to play him because he's pro he's producing. And kind of going back with Francis and Sampson, two other guys with, with great size and athleticism, but you touched on the work ethic. I just want to add to that. It is certainly there. You know, these guys work hard. They essentially want to learn more from their from their uh, other offensive linemen. They're asking questions that they're students of the game. So that is all there in addition to their physical traits. Mark Fletcher, David, let, let's talk about Mark here, um, but but maybe just touch on him, but also maybe a couple guys or one or two guys that maybe a freshman that can get on the field this year, maybe in a reserve role that may, outside of these top five, but touch on Mark just a bit here. Yeah, Mark's running back, right? And I think he's a guy, I wouldn't be surprised if at some point this season, he takes on a lead running back role. He checks those boxes you were referring to earlier uh, with these freshmen we're highlighting where he not only has the physical traits, the physical ability at 6'1", 225, he has the mentality. Uh, he gets it. He's a mature guy willing to put in the work. Um, so I think he's he's a guy that you look at too as a true freshman that can come in and earn a big role. I will admit, so we, we see a lot of these guys in various settings at the high school level. I'll admit during the spring, uh, the spring performance, one guy that was better than I expected was tight end Riley Williams. You know, I don't think he's necessarily going to earn a huge role this year, but I do think he might get on the field. Uh, I don't know, 100, 150 snaps this year. I think he's a guy to like for the future in particular. I'm keeping an eye on Damari Brown. Summer enrollee at cornerback. We all know Miami needs someone to step up at cornerback. They brought in a lot of transfers. It's not going to be an easy path for Damari, but he's a talented guy uh, to keep an eye on. I know inside the program, they're high on Josh Horton, the defensive tackle. Again, it's tough for those guys to get on the field as true freshmen, um, but Miami feels like with his skill set, his frame and ability to be a run stopper down the road, they might have to throw him in there um, in that role. And then Tommy Kinsler, 